And he says, Who art thou, Lord? Right. Amen. And that voice came back and said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. That this body that you are persecuting, it is the body of Christ that you are persecuting. Amen. It is not another religion that you are fighting against, but it is the body that you are persecuting. It is not the religious movement, Paul. But it is the body that you are persecuting. Amen. And he said, it is hard for thee to kick against the prince. Saul so said, I'll tell you what you're going to do. He said, in order for you to receive your sight. See, God had to blind him from religion. In order for him to see Jesus. So he said, I'm going to send you into a city. And there's going to be a man lay hands on you. And he's going to pray for you. And your eyes are going to be open. And you'll never be the same. Amen. Praise God. So God brought him out of that pharisaical religion and put him into a real relationship with him. And that's what we need is a real relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You don't need another religion. You need a relationship with Jesus. You don't need another philosophy. You need a relationship with Jesus. Amen. So, as, 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 and he, he was converted from Saul of Tarsus, called to be an apostle, to take the, the word of God and the message of Jesus Christ to the Gentile nations. And because of the conversion of, of Saul of Tarsus to the apostle Paul, that's why we preach the gospel in the United States of America. That's why we have churches in the United States of America. That's why we are saved today. Amen. Is that Paul, amen, brought the gospel to us. Amen. And so he had this miraculous conversion. And everywhere that Paul would go, Paul would give an impromptu speech concerning his conversion. Amen. He would stop people on the streets, tell people about Jesus. Amen. Paul would begin to preach. And because of his conversion, he was invited to preach uh, at a number of places. Paul's informal speeches uh, opened up a great door for him to preach and to be heard. Amen. And here in Acts chapter 17, Paul was invited to address the Arapagus. Amen. Here he is in the city of Athens. Athens is a very uh, superstitious city. Amen. They had all kinds of gods. And they, they believed that everything was a god. And so people would come to Athens and they would worship these gods. They had this Greek mythology of all these different gods. That, that ruled and reigned and would give you power and, and all of this, amen. Even in the athletes, they would call on the names of these gods and they, 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 they thought that they would have this power, amen. Praise God. And so now Paul is in the city of Athens and he, because of who he is, he is there uh, to address the Arapagus. Uh, in the Arapagus was originally, originally a court, amen, and it was a court where, where uh, or a place where new ideas were heard and tested, new ideas, new philosophies, if anybody had a new idea, new philosophy, uh, any enlightenment concerning a new God then they could come to Eropagus and they could, they could get up and they could speak concerning this God. Amen. And, and Paul it is there. And Paul has developed an argument. Amen. A natural theological argument based on God's self 
revelation and natural revelation. Say what you're talking about right there, that Paul is going to get up and Paul is going to give them a revelation of Almighty God based upon some natural things that God has done. Amen. Praise God. That we don't have to have some kind of uh, real exegetical, theological philosophy of this God that I can give you a revelation of some natural things that God is doing. I can tell you what he has done in my life. I can tell you what he has done in the lives of those around you. And we can argue the point that he is a true and living God according to what has already happened in our life. Amen. He set me free. He delivered me. He put me in my right mind. Amen. Hallelujah. So Paul